Welcome back to Splatalot, the messiest medieval monarchy there is. I'm Jason Agnew. And I'm Matt Chin, and round two is where things get crazy. Well, we whittled down our attackers from 12 to a select six. Martin, Jacob, Ethan, Liam, Presley, and Sarthak. It's like the Beatles. What? Round two is called Escape the Stockade, and it's a great escape if there ever was one. I don't know how that's like the Beatles, but anyway, this is easily one of my favorite rounds in the game, but I love them all. It starts here on the Wheel of Certain Doom. Just looking at that thing is making me dizzy. Well, take a grab all and look over there. See those runs? After being thoroughly spun, attackers have to grab these one at a time and build a ladder to escape. The only thing that could make this more challenging is if all the rungs were different sizes. Well, they are. I'm going insane! After the ladders are built, they have to get a flag from the top of the wheel and escape with it. But there's only four flags. But there are six attackers. It's a spinning, whirling nightmare. I'm going to enjoy this. Bring in the defender. The name's Kukabara. Ooh, Kook knows magic now. This gentleman needs no introduction, but what the heck, it's my man, Gildar. And Outback Huntress, the mystical Crocness. It'll be our pleasure to see you fall. And fail. <laughs> the attackers are latched to the wheel, and things are gonna get messy, so watch the helmet. With the orange stripe, Martin. Liam is in yellow. Ethan is feeling it in blue. Jacob got stuck with pink. Presley's an orange, and Situation Green for Sarthak. Looks like Gildar is getting this show on the road with the foam cannon. It's like you're the bread, and that's the butter. Do you know what I mean? It's just like a warm sensation. Yeah, that's it. There's the horn, and here we go. Is it just me, or are you hungry after Kook's little pep talk there? Nah, it's just you. Ethan has picked up the first rung. So have Jacob and oh. Martin. And Ethan's the first one to take a hit. This is a really bad start for everyone involved. Not me, though. Oh, Kook splats Presley. Now Ethan. I'm amazing. Yes, you are, my friend. Some of our attackers are adding a lot of rungs to their ladders, but Presley's not one of them. Martin has just put in his fourth rung and has jumped way out in front. The weapons don't seem to be working. I thought animated bird calls? Kook is rewriting the strategy book with this. Hard to tell if it's working or not because the splats are out of control. I think Presley's been lured. Oh, no! Kook just bird called Presley's face straight into that post. Ouch. Well, what around so far? Martin and Ethan are way out in front. Liam, Presley, and Sarthak, huh, they're a little behind. Anyone need to rinse? Kook's water cannon is making things mighty slippery out there. As Ethan. And Martin have both found out, but Martin has put on his final rung. And the sorceress of the swamp is not happy about that. Slime! And let me tell you that Goo and Crocness's slime stick is vile. Open mouth! That's not fair! It's not! It's flat a lot! Okay, let's recap. Six attackers, but only four flags. Who's it gonna be? Ethan has got his flag and is scrambling to the top of the ladder. Eat slime, Ethan! And Ethan is one step closer to the crown. Only three more to go. Martin has his rungs in place and is going for the flag. It's total mayhem down there. Human pinball. Oh, oh. we've got a malfunction at the junction, oh, Maddie. That's gotta hurt. <laughs> Martin has taken his flag to the top. Only two more left with a chance to advance to round three. Jacob easily grabs his flag. Finally, Gildar's bringing out the big gun, Bullseye. Let me show you that in slow-mo. Gildar shoots, and right here, he's gonna hit Presley in the noodle. Oh, devastating blow. Jacob is at the top with the third flag. That leaves Presley, Liam, and Sarthak fighting for the final flag. Take that, Sarthak. Sarthak well behind Presley at this stage. Whoa, watch out for the big red tanny thing. <laughs> Looks like it'll be Presley advancing if she can just hang on for the fourth. Oh, all that slime and all that goo, you think the landing would be a bit softer. What's this? A come from behind victory? Sarthak has the last flag and is slip sliding his way all the way to the ladder. Sarthak showing how it's not done. Sarthak is at the top. That's it. What a round, folks. Nice work, defenders. It was touch and go there for a while, but moving on is Martin, Jacob, Ethan, and Sarthak. And going home are Liam and Presley. That was the round to end all rounds, and there's still one more to come. It's the big event. Hit, 
swooshes and splats in round three. And someone's walking away with the crowd. Welcome back to Splatalot, the game where the attackers storm the castle and try to capture the crown. And in our final round, these four attackers, Martin, Jacob, Ethan, and Sarthak, have to take on all six defenders as they foolishly try to capture the crown. You say foolishly, I say valiantly. And I say foolishly. This group is like some kind of dream team, and if it's a dream, I don't want to wake up. Well, let's take a look at the course. Our attackers are going to start off going down a pole into a pile of foam. Then it's on to the teeters, up across the lily pads and onto the water wall. And at the top, there it is, the crown. That doesn't sound too hard. Well, we'll see about that. Let's head down to the course where the action is. Asbestos. 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 Look at those attackers. You can almost smell the intensity down there. You call it intensity? I call it pant-sweating terror. What do you make of this asbestos chant? The defenders are obviously striking fear into the attackers. By referring to a hazardous substance? Pretty scary to me. And here we go. Nearest is Martin in the blue helmet with the orange stripe. Jacob's in pink, Ethan's in blue, and at the top, Sarthak in green. That looks like a severe case of armpit contusion. Armpit contusion? I've never heard of that. We'll call the Harvard Medical Review because it's real now. Too bad. Getting on the theaters is easy. Staying on is the hard part. And Sarthak hasn't even gotten on yet. Oh, even slip, slip, boom! These attackers are their own worst enemies. The defenders haven't even broken a sweat. Well, maybe they should start sweating because Jacob just made it across the teeters and is about to hop onto the lethal lily pad. Whoa! <laughs> Nitrous will see about that. She has a score to settle from round one. Well, it's that time again. Once the first attacker has made it across the barrier, the water wall begins to flow. Back on the other side of the barrier, Sarthak's having a hard time. Well, Martin's just trying to hang on. Just give it up and let go. Thank you. This is my favorite round. The splats per minute are off the chart. Let's get it together, people. Gildar rallying the troops. Martin takes a huge spill. Gildar now targets Jacob as he prepares to do another frog hop to the next lily pad. It's a face full of lily pad for Jacob, who's still practicing his kung frog. Sarthak's down. Ethan, too. Martin making a go of it. Is he over? No! Ethan trying again. Come on, Ethan! Yes, he is over! Don't get too excited. This is where my defenders step it up. They're implementing the Sleeping Tiger. The Sleeping Tiger? They originally wanted to call it the Crotch Blaster, but it sounded too painful. Looks painful to me, but whatever they call it, it seems to be working. The remaining two attackers seem to be running out of steam. The defenders aren't backing off. They're still pummeling them with everything they got. And score one chin plant for the whole team. This is a really close race. Ethan is right behind Jacob. Kook's aim, though, looking a little low. Whoa! Point blank blast into Tink's robot head. He is not happy. <laughs> Jacob is about to scale the water wall. It's down to the wire. Ethan and Jacob are neck and neck. Is there any way they can both lose? Someone do something. Shoot something at them. They are climbing the water wall, and Jacob has made it to the top. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob has the crown. Jacob has the crown. <laughs> that is all, folks. It is all over. That goes for you too, Martin, Ethan, and Sarthak. Your day's over. But for Jacob, victory is sweet. You know what? I don't care anymore. I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't upset me. <laughs> Gildar is gracious to the end. Wow, what an incredible round. That's right, the defenders dug deep and kept three out of the four from capturing the crown. But there can only be one winner. My point exactly. Nice work, defenders. It's time now for my favorite part of the show, the splat of the day. It all started innocently enough. Martin grabs his flag and then suddenly slips. Boom! His head impacting the annihilating arm with incredible velocity. Wickedly snapping back and taking out Jacob in the process. Amazing! 
That was a good one. I could feel the shock waves all the way up here. Well, it's time for the crown ceremony. Let's take a quick look back at how Jacob made it here. In round one, he was an unstoppable force, posting the fastest time of the day. In round two, facing some adversity, he managed to move on. And in round three, he focused, was first over the hurdle, and led the entire way. Matt, he was unstoppable today. Yes, it's been a glorious day here in Splatalot, and we hope you'll join us again next time for some more messy mayhem. And more breathtaking defender action. I'm the king of the castle. Till next time, I'm Jason Agnew. And I'm Matt Chin.